Your Excellency Xi Jinping, President of the People's Republic of China, Your Excellencies, Heads of State and Government, Your Excellency Antonio Guterres, United Nations Secretary General, Heads of International Organization, Ladies and Gentlemen. At the outset, allow me to express my gratitude to President Xi Jinping and the Government of the People's Republic of China for convening us today and for the warm hospitality that has been accorded to us. I am very pleased to join here in Beijing for the 10th anniversary of the Belt and Road Initiative. The BRI, which is a laudable ambition to connect Asia, Europe and Africa, is a significant international cooperation initiative anchored in the principles of collective progress. I applaud President Xi for his vision in designing and launching the Belt and Road Initiative, as well as for the proposal of the three global initiatives of civilization, security, and development, aimed at building a community with a shared future. Excellencies, as a global community, we find ourselves in an ever-complex and crisis-prone world. We are confronted with a climate problem, structural shifts, and global insecurity. Concerted and collaborative efforts to address our common challenges have, been, have often helped us remain resilient. Hence, more than ever, we are called upon as a global leaders to uphold the principles of humanity, justice, inclusivity, equity, and compassion in rising up to the occasion. I stand before you representing an ancient and historic civilization, Ethiopia, a country gifted with a robust and resilient population of over 120 million that drives Africa's fastest growing economy. Located in the home region, Ethiopia also serves as an important gateway between Africa, the Middle East, and the wider Asia. I also stand before you as a proud Africa that hails from a continent of 1.4 billion people, a continent with a thriving youth population that is propelling it to become a global economic powerhouse. Without a doubt, Africa is the next frontier market. Excellencies, historic relations between the African continent and China span 2,000 years. Sino-African relations can be traced back to the reign of Emperor Wu of Han, with the development of the Silk Road, exchanges between Africa and China become increasingly frequent and reached their peak during the Ming, the Ming Dynasty. Admiral Zheng He's voyage to the Western Seas reached the east coast of Africa, bridging Chinese specialties such as ceramics and silk, and returning to China with many commodities. China, China has maintained diplomatic relations with numerous African countries since the Ming Dynasty. Sino-African ties today have grown exponentially, characterized by a commitment to mutually beneficial cooperation and respect for sovereignty. Through the BRI, these relations are delivering infrastructure developments across Africa, as well as helping to improve trade within the continent and with China. As the largest ever transnational infrastructure program, 
the BRI is there for facilitating integration and sustainable growth, large-scale investments in infrastructure and the strengthened commercial ties have boosted the continent's economic development. With a rapidly growing population, the African continent is in high demand of sustainable and dignified development. And through BRI investments, many jobs have been created and livelihoods improved. Road and railway projects are linking previously unconnected places. People-to-people -people relations are being enhanced, both within and across countries. The principle of connectivity inherent in BRI has also offered African countries with alternative source of capital, technology, and skills needed for our modernization agenda. In my country, Ethiopia, for example, one of the remarkable BRI accomplishments is the construction of Africa's longest electric transnational railway, which runs through Ethiopia all the way to Djibouti. The line revitalized local and regional economies. It plays a critical role in connecting people and enhancing efficiency in the logistics value chain along the strategically significant Ethiopia-Djibouti corridor. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, once a source of raw materials, Africa is now realizing its potential and capacity. A continent that has been sidelined until now is harnessing the demographic dividend, leveraging its natural endowments, and rapidly becoming a global economic, social, and political powerhouse. In the global arena, the inclusion of African Union as permanent member of the G20 is a long overdue, recognition of the voice of a continent with 1.4 billion people. With around 85% of global GDP and roughly 75% of global trade represented by the G20, the African Union's entry will significantly enhance the continent's ability to raise and collectively address issues of development that excessively affect Africa. As inclusivity is becoming a necessary feature of multilateralism, I have no doubt that such reforms we are witnessing in the global fora will extend to include African countries as permanent members of the United Nations Security Council. It has been said that the flapping of the wings of a butterfly can be felt on the other side of the world. The African continent in particular has suffered the consequences of the climate crisis as well as interstate conflict in other parts of the world. As a result, we cannot be idle observers in forums that affect our common well-being since they shape our fate. Excellencies, we recognize that peace and development are two sides of the same coin. They are mutually reinforcing. Inclusive and equitable growth is essential to sustain peace. And a culture of peace is essential to enabling sustainable growth. Initiatives like the BRI, when fully implemented to potential, invariably foster peaceful development. The power of integration resides in enabling schemes that bring people closer to intimate knowledge and understanding of one another. Infrastructure used to bridge rather than divide offers value and build distrust. In a world full of barriers, I call upon all of us to build bricks to connect metaphorically as well as literally. As I conclude my remarks, I would like to highlight the proposal put for, 
posed by the President Xi during the recent China-Africa Leaders' Dialogue held in Johannesburg. This includes China's initiative on supporting Africa's industrialization, plan for China supporting Africa's agriculture modernization, and the plan for China-Africa cooperation on talent development. I also support the eight points proposed by President Xi because it mainly focuses on investing both on people and planet, which leads us to prosperity. These Africa-centered initiatives are foresighted investments that build a bridge to the Africa we want. I would like to emphasize that Ethiopia fully welcomes these plans and initiatives in harmony with our development strategy and 10-year economic plan to diversify our economy and forge our path to holistic prosperity. I thank you.